So I posted something earlier today, and I said I would do a video, and yes, I'm still working on that list. I am really torn as to where to put some of these people, and I want it to be right when I post it, so yes, it's still taking time, sorry, yada yada. But I did mention today that I don't have a problem with Ash anymore. I have a problem with his Pokemon. Let's talk about it. Okay, so here's what's going on. Today I come across this article that says that Journey is probably going to ruin people's childhoods because it's going to evolve Ash's Pikachu. And... I see some people that obviously have not been watching Pokemon for the last 10 years who are on there who can't wait but be vocal and be like, oh no, he can't do that, blah, blah, blah. Oh man, I love Pikachu. This is so wrong. No more Ash's Pikachu. He's the face of the franchise, blah, blah, blah. And then I've had people that are like, well, it's about time. And I'm one of those people. It's about time. Now look... A lot of people take this opportunity to crush Ash. That it's his fault. It's his problem. It's his reason. It's not. It's not. And it never has been. Ever. Look, recently, and I honestly don't remember why, I was playing Sword and Shield, and I think my daughter started watching the original series again. And then the next thing I knew, I was watching it without her. And then, you know, she would go to her mom's and she would watch Journey and all the new stuff. And I wasn't ready to jump into the new stuff. I was legitimately curious about all the stuff that I had missed over the years. So I started re-watching the original series and moving through the first area, the Indigo, all the stuff of the original eight gems, the red, blue, green games, yellow game. And it, something hit me as I was going through this. Ash, or rather, okay, us. Us. As kids that played the game, this show was marketed to us. Be it here in America, be it over there in Japan, all around the world, didn't matter. We were the ones playing the game, be it the card game, be it the actual video game, be it reading the manga, be it watching the show. What was the one thing that drew all of these things together in a big way? Evolution. And not just because Pokemon evolve and it's cool, but because as Pokemon evolve, they get stronger and their skills get bigger and the fights get bigger. And what other shows have followed this trope throughout our years? I don't know. Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakushu, Avatar the Airbender. All these shows follow the idea that you get, you start at one point, you become challenged. You move up the ladder in strength, and no matter how many times you go up a step on this ladder, the ladder of potential never ends. There's always another Super Saiyan. There's always another form. There's always a new martial art. There's always another person on the next ring of that ladder that is stronger than you are. But your battle is not against that person. It's against yourself to better yourself and to move up the ladder in yourself, you are always your biggest, biggest challenge. You're your biggest enemy. You succeed over yourself and become a better you and repeat the process and repeat the process and repeat the process, making the human potential limitless. That's a concept that is written into Pokemon. These people, trainers, they gather creatures, they train them, these creatures evolve, move forward, and they move on to bigger battles, bigger journeys, bigger areas. They catch more, they develop, they learn, they strategize. This is something that Ash legitimately did. For some reason, his Pokemon do not. And I never realized it 
until I was an older person watching this series again. But look, when it starts out, he can't battle for shit. He barely catches his first Pokemon, which is luck, because all he does was all he did was throw the ball and basically connect with a Caterpie, and he got lucky. And then what did he do? He took that Caterpie and immediately threw it out against a Pidgeotto because his battle prowess was literally awful. But if you're paying attention to the way the show goes, after that point, he developed. He actually moved forward from where he was, and by the end of that first series, when he is challenging the league, he is competent. He he uses strategy. He uses different Pokemon for different situations. He utilizes his environment. He watches the other person as they battle. He looks for tropes and ways to stand out and be surprising and uses an intelligent amount of strategy that he did not have when he started. Pikachu, his partner Pokemon and every other partner Pokemon in the original series is different, though. Caterpie, Caterpie evolves and moves up the line and becomes something else. Pidgeotto? Is Pidgeotto forever until Ash releases it? Also, the releasing of Pidgeotto is a character trope not for the bird, but for Ash. He grows as a person making a making a grown-up decision for the better of the Pokemon he was training rather than himself because he could have held on to that bird and won competitions. But that wasn't what about that wasn't what it was about. He grew as a person by making a very personal decision. Same thing happens with Butterfree. These are sad episodes that develop Ash as a person and move him up the ladder. But Pikachu encounters a Raichu and never he doesn't evolve he proves that he can be better than that Raichu on his own and then they continue this weird Pikachu Raichu rivalry thing throughout the course of Pokemon and it's wrong because quite frankly Pikachu should never never be stronger than a Raichu if the Raichu was trained properly. Especially with things like, we've all played the games, TMs and everything, 85% of the time the only thing you need to do is get a level 1 Pikachu, literally force its evolution, force some TMs down its neck, and then do your proper EV and IV trainings, and guess what? No Pikachu can ever keep up with you. And by the time Pikachu learns Thunder, especially in the original games, you should evolve. Because you need the higher stats to make use of that power. But he never does it. And it's not Ash that doesn't do this. Ash makes a conscious decision to allow Pikachu to grow up when it's ready. And it never chose to. Ever. Until the possibility of what's about to happen now. And he's not the only one. Charmander grew up and even grew up faster than Ash and resented him on that fact. He never felt like Ash had what it took to move through the league and that Ash was standing still and he was ready to move forward. And it made him this resentful, angry thing that was pissed to be stuck with a trainer and a master who never really gave him what he felt he needed to move forward. Okay, but you know Squirtle? He's a Squirtle, he's a Squirtle, he's a Squirtle, he's a Squirtle. That's it. That's all he is. He never evolves. Pikachu, 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 all the time with Pikachu. Bulbasaur, 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 Bulbasaur. Listen, Bulbasaur, you know fucking Solar Beam. That's, that's the top of your fucking move pool. That's your quintessential attack back then in those days, especially in the original game. You know Solar Beam. That's the fucking top-level tier of what you can accomplish as a grass in that game. You know it. You're still a Bulbasaur, and you... Like, it's weird. He, he even has a special episode that's given to him where he could have evolved, and then for some reason he 
denies it. He resists evolution because he's Bulbasaur. Why? Why do the Pokemon refuse to grow up and evolve? And yet, it's their choice. And who do we choose to shit on? Ash. Rewatching this anime is changing my opinion drastically. I think Ash may not be as bad as people make him. Yes, he's a moron, but he's a moron tied to the basis of living in a kid's cartoon. But consistently in that kid's cartoon, he proves time and time again that he has the strategic prowess to compete at a level that other trainers don't have. And let's be honest, you travel around the Pokemon universe, random gentleman with Eradicate did not make it to the league because he doesn't have the skill set to go there. But guess who did? Ash. And yes, sometimes badges are given to Ash, and it's a little questionable. But maybe the idea of earning a badge is not just winning a competition, but sometimes the idea of winning a badge may be because of the character and the skill sets that you prove through your actions. And in that ideal, he does show consistent personal growth throughout the history of the show, starting as early as the Boulder Badge. The Boulder Badge is rock. It is the systematic inner strength of a person to be determined to move past this, to take the first step into a larger world. Brock is the cornerstone, sorry, to this entire step. When you stand against him and you throw your Pokemon out there, he will battle you. And there are two ways to get through him. By proving the character of your person that you can handle these steps and move forward in the path that you have just chosen, or you can wipe him with your Squirtle or Bulbasaur or Fighting Kicky Man. Either one of these things, either, either one of these two things show that you are ready to take this next step. Because one, if you're, if you're systematically and strategically minded enough to wreck him with something that he can't handle, he has to acknowledge your battle prowess. Not necessarily that you're ready to move through the entire league, but hey, you're ready to take the first step. Ash, on the other hand, gets it a different way. Through a system of circumstances... He is given a win that he should have never gotten. But he doesn't take that win because it's not right. And showing the character of his person, he backs down because he feels he was not about to win that fight of his own accord. He was about to win through circumstances, and that's not how he wants to start this out. He wants to prove that he can do this of his own accord. And that shows the, that shows the strength of his character as a person, and Brock recognizes that and gives him the badge. So, the badges, in my opinion, are an acknowledgement of the trainers that you are of sound mind and body and ready as a person to move up into the professional leagues, taking care of both yourself and the Pokemon that you command. And Ash proves this time and time again. I mean, he makes it to the league. There are plenty of people in that universe that never even come close. Never even come close. In fact, there are people that he meets along his journey that very much look like they're outclassing him at every turn. And they don't make it to the league. They're not there when he gets there. At the end of his journey, when he reaches the league, there are people that you thought were going to make it. Like that kid he met that had the sand shrew that completely wrecked him and showed him that if you're willing to give it all you've got, if you're willing to powerhouse these Pokemon and train hard... All you need is the stronger fist to walk up through the ranks. Well, that ideology did work against Ash at that point. But evidently, it didn't work throughout the region because he did not show up 
at the league. And he is not the only person that's been like this. There's a lot of characters that went through this trope. And they didn't show up at the end. He did. But for some reason, his Pokemon are locked in limbo. They refuse to grow up and refuse to evolve. And the thing that confuses me about this in terms of an anime is that when we were kids and we played the card game, what did the card game teach us to do? Evolve. When we played the video game, what did the video game teach us to do? Teach them, train them, evolve them. When we, when we read the manga, what does the manga tell us to do? The manga shows us a character that moves through the region, evolving and teaching his Pokemon. And then the anime shows us that you can sometimes get shitty Pokemon that just never evolve, no matter what. Doesn't matter how strong they are. Doesn't matter if your Charmander is already doing Flamethrower. It can't evolve. It's not ready. He uses, he, Pikachu uses Thunder, but nothing. Now, I realize you can go your entire game and never evolve your Pikachu. It's not the same scenario. But for something like, for something like Squirtle that can use Hydro Pump, what? Bulbasaur can use Solar Beam, what? What? Oh, and because he can evidently ride Squirtle in the water, Squirtle knows surf. He's far enough along in his development to be taught surf. But for some reason, he will not evolve. That is not Ash's fault. That is the fault of the Pokemon in his possession that for some reason refuse to fucking grow up. And the only thing I can attest, the only thing I can imagine, the only thing that comes to mind is that the Pokemon that he gathers, sometimes he does not catch them. Sometimes they go with him. And the Pokemon that he catch or receive this way they choose to go with him and they're already in weird stagnant positions in their life like being a troublemaking orphan thing or like some weird protector that has a chip on its shoulder and something to prove because maybe it was hurt by an old trainer and it doesn't like trainers in general. Well, when you get these things this way and they never evolve... That's not him, that's them. And it proceeds even into black and white with characters like Tepig. I don't remember Tepig evolving. Now I only made it through half of black and white, but it didn't happen. Not when I was there. And why? Anyways, that's all I got here. It's just a quick video to say, I don't think it's his fault. And I think if they're finally doing this in Journey, if they're finally forcing both him and his Pokemon to evolve as people and as power levels imply you should as you get greater and stronger and more knowledgeable you evolve as a person he evolves as a person shouldn't his fucking pokemon do the same not his fault not entirely later on i have spoken Take what you will from it.